Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, you can call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. If you want to check out our Truth Treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Truth Transdermal C Balm and the award winning Truth Transdermal C Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surf- uh, water pres- uh, fragrances, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. And any of our truth treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com, including our new biomimetic priming mist, which should be out, uh, I'm guessing, in a, maybe a week or two weeks, made with fulvic minerals, as well as high hyaluronic acid, and uh, amino acids and sodium lactate. Fulvic minerals are absolutely amazing for the skin. Fulvic minerals are plant-derived minerals. Plants have an interesting ability to take rocks and somehow turn them into magical minerals with the action of microbes that live in the soil. Between the microbes that live in the soil and the uh, activity of the plants, Rocks are turned into magical minerals, magical nutritional minerals that have value internally as well as topically. Internally, our plant-derived colloidal minerals are just that, plant-derived minerals that have been magically transformed from rocks via the actions of microbes. And our fulvic mineral spray, biomimetic priming mist, is made with the same kind of minerals. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. All all our truth treatment products are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, speaking of skin, we're talking about alpha hydroxy acids. We've been talking about the speeding up property of alpha hydroxy acids, how they can speed things up. When we age, everything's slowing down. AHAs are your anti-aging, the the iconic topical anti-aging ingredient for aging skin, sluggish skin, slow skin. When we talk about drying skin or aging skin or thinning skin, we're talking about slow skin. We're talking about sluggish skin. That's what happens as we get older. Everything slows down. We become sluggish. When we're sick, we're sluggish. Sickness is stagnation. Disease is about slowing down. It's about stagnation. It's about things not moving. The body needs movement. The fluids need to move. The muscles need to move. The the lungs need to move. Air needs to be going in and out of the body. All this movement generates electricity. As we age and things start to slow down, we generate less and less electricity. That's what aging is about. That's That's what health is really about, electricity. Nutrition only works because it facilitates electricity. We are electrical beings, and this electrical energy is energy. This this electricity is energy. It's movement. It's activity. And the skin, this whole discussion we've been having about the skin now for a couple of months, maybe uh, six weeks or so, this whole discussion is important for overall health for a couple of reasons. Number one, the skin is an organ of the body. It's obviously part of the body. We call it the body's largest organ. We don't treat it like an organ, but we call it 
the body's largest organ in the body. It plays a, a very important role on the health of the inside of the body. But this whole discussion on skin is important for other reasons, too. It's important because, it's mostly important because the skin is like a poster child for what's happening in the skin or what's happening in the body. The, our misunderstanding of the skin mirrors the misunderstandings we have inside the body. Yes, it's true the skin plays as, is an organ of the body. Yes, it's true the skin plays an obvious role in beauty and attractiveness, our perception of beauty and attractiveness. But even more importantly, the skin is a poster child for what's wrong with how we treat the body. Because we don't really understand what's happening on the skin. We have no idea for the most part, at least the average person has no idea of what's happening in the skin. If you studied it, obviously you're going to know more. But if the average person, we don't understand what's happening in the skin. So how the heck are we going to know how to treat the skin if we don't understand what's happening in the skin? It's the same thing inside the body. We don't understand what's happening inside the body. So how can we be expected to treat or to take care of or to address what's happening inside the body? If something's going wrong inside the body but we don't understand it, of course we're going to be stuck with a, uh, working at the symptom level. In terms of the skin, if we don't understand what's happening in the skin, of course we're going to be stuck with rubbing a cream on and seeing how it feels and hoping for the best. That's really pretty much how we make our, our buying decisions on skincare products. We rub the cream on, we see how it feels, and we hope for the best. And it doesn't have to be that way. It's only because we don't understand what's happening in the skin. The failure of, this, of the way we treat the skin and the end result of our collective non-understanding of what's happening in the skin is billions of dollars in sales and almost nobody happy with their skin care. Take dry skin, for example. I've said this so many times, and I've been, I'm, t I'm telling you this as somebody who's been in the skincare business as a formulator for, since 1983, okay? So let's say dry skin. With all the moisturizers in the marketplace, how many moisturizers do you think are out there? Uh, 25 bazillion? I, ridiculous amount, right? It's incalculable amount. Like there are stars in the sky. There's moisturizers in the marketplace. And we spend billions of dollars every year on moisturizers. And yet everybody still has dry skin. How is it that we can have more moisturizers than there are people and everybody still has dry skin? How is it that everybody's using moisturizers but everybody still has dry skin? Clearly there's something wrong. Dry skin, if, if the skin is like a poster child for what's wrong with how we treat the body, dry skin is a poster child disease or disorder that exemplifies everything that's wrong about how we treat the skin. We don't, I would bet there's not a person out there listening to this program, and I would bet there's probably not a dermatologist out there who knows what dry skin is or what causes dry skin at the fundamental levels. Nobody does. How can we make a buying decision on a moisturizer? How can we take care of our dry skin if we don't know what the heck is causing the dry skin? And like I say, not even doctors don't know what causes the dry skin. I'm going to tell you what causes dry skin here in a minute. The point I want to make now, though, is if we don't understand what's happening, if we don't understand the mechanisms, it's all about the mechanisms. When I'm trying to see, when I'm learning about a new drug or if a new drug comes out or if I'm interested in a drug, some, somebody asks me a question about it, the first thing I look is the mechanism. I want to know how is that drug working? What is the mechanism of action? This is a program where we talk about mechanisms, how things work. I don't just say, take this, take that. I don't like that. I want you to understand the mechanisms. Then you become powerful. When we understand the mechanisms, we become powerful. I don't understand anything about my computer. And when my computer goes wrong, if something goes wrong with my computer, I'm in big trouble. Because I don't understand the mechanism. So I gotta have somebody come in, I gotta fix my computer, I gotta wait while he comes in, I gotta beg him to come in if he can't come in. Because I don't know the mechanism of my computer. Now I've tried to learn the mechanism of my computer, it's over my head. All right, so, you know, this, this is an example of the powerlessness we have when we don't understand the mechanisms. This is a program dedicated to helping us understand the mechanisms of what's happening in the body. And the mechanisms, for at least for our purposes here today and for the last few weeks, of, of what's happening in the skin. So what the heck is going on when we have dry skin? Well, I tell you what's really going on when we have dry skin. You won't be surprised because it's basically the same stuff that goes wrong when you have any kind of problem inside the body or outside the body. And we'll uh, continue this, this discussion when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back. 
on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 is Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase Longevity products off brightsideben.com. Also, uh, Longevity products can be bought off of uh, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can join the team from the websites as well. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a Longevity business and join me in my mission to educate the world about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be. If you saw what I saw or what I've seen over the last 30 years, you'd be, you'd be doing this too. You'd be screaming from every rooftop you could find that when you get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you've never supplemented before, your life will change, especially if you're sick, especially if you're on medication, especially if your body is less than 100% optimal functioning, even if you're not, don't have a, 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 an official diagnosis. When you load the body up with these raw materials, the raw materials we call nutrients, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, nutritional supplements, it is absolutely nothing short, shy of life transforming if you've never done it before. Now, if you've supplemented already, if you've got a history of supplementation, you kind of know what you're doing. You're not going to get those kinds of dramatic life-changing benefits because your body's already in tune to it. But if you've never done it before, if you guys are out there listening, you've never supplemented before, I encourage you just at least try to get, just at least try the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Don't have to do two full scoops of the stuff. You could do half a teaspoonful in a glass of water and sip on it. And one of the great gifts of the human body is the more deficient we are, the faster our body absorbs those nutrients. And the sicker we are, the faster we turn it around. All right. Continue on with the skin. Dry skin is like a poster child for what's wrong with how we treat the body, like a poster child for what's wrong with how we treat the skin. I would venture to say not one in a thousand could tell you what exactly dry skin is, what causes dry skin. Well, first of all, as we said before, nobody really feels dry skin. What we're feeling is skin hardness. We're feeling hard skin, brittle skin. And when I say skin, I'm talking about the surface of the skin. The, The surface of the skin is made up of a kind of fingernail-like material that has barrier properties. It's actually called a barrier. It's specifically a barrier to water. That's its main role, actually, is to be a barrier to water. Keep water in, keep water out. And this surface, this slender little tiny slice of tissue that's maybe one-tenth of a piece of notebook paper is so fascinating. It is so amazing. There's huge, there's, uh, huge textbooks written just about this little tiny slice of tissue that is literally one-tenth of a piece of notebook paper thick. It's called the stratum corneum. And when we, have dry, uh, when we say we have dry skin, what we're really feeling is a hard stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is supposed to be a barrier, but it's supposed to be a kind of flexible barrier, kind of a plasticky flowing barrier. And it has fats in there, and it has water in there, and all that keeps everything kind of softened. When, when for whatever reason, that area does not have the moisture that it's supposed to have, we feel a hardness on the skin. And that's why... We rub moisturizers on. Moisturizers don't moisturize. They soften. They should be called softenizers, not moisturizers, because they soften. They don't moisturize. So you say, oh, yeah, well, so they soften. That's just semantics. No, it's not, because, you see, moisturization is impossible, but softening can occur with anything. Not anything, but a lot of things. Olive oil will soften your skin. Butter will soften your skin. Lard will soften your skin. Coconut oil will soften your skin. Anything that's a lipid, that's fatty, will soften your skin. If it's got enough fattiness to it, anything. Avocados will do it. Just find your favorite softener. You don't need to go out and spend $100 on a moisturizer or $50 on a moisturizer or even $10 on a moisturizer. But here's the thing. You haven't done anything for your dryness. You just soften the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is what we're feeling is a hardness, but that hardness is is being caused by a lack of hydration. There's a lack of water in that area, in that slender little tissue, that slice of tissue called the stratum corneum. So the key to really taking care of dry skin is to facilitate its wateriness. Now, we know that you can't do it by taking a shower. You know we can't do it by soaking in water. In fact, if you soak in water, you can cause a really big problem. If you soak your leg in water for two days, you probably have... You have to have your, 
leg amputated. I don't know if it'd be that bad, but you'd have a severe and severe pain and, and you could certainly cause neural damage. You might have to have your leg amputated if you had your leg in water long enough. So clearly putting your leg in water, putting your body in water, that's not going to get you moist. Softening the skin is not going to get you, high, I should say hydrated, not moist. That's a more technically accurate word. You can't soak your skin in water to hydrate it. You can't uh, use a moist a softener, so-called moisturizer. That's not going to hydrate it. So what are you going to do? Well, in order to figure out how you're going to do it, how you're going to take care of your dry skin at its mechanism level, we got to understand the mechanism. What is it that causes the dry skin? Why, why is it that the skin is not staying hydrated? Normal skin, healthy skin is never dry. Let me say that again. That's so important. Healthy skin is never dry. Dry skin is thus a health issue. It's a sign that something's wrong. It's a sign that something has disrupted the mechanisms of hydration. And while it's not the end of the world, it's certainly not, you know, like heart disease or something, it is still a sign that something's wrong. The thing about the skin is when the body is, is deficient in nutrients, the body's not doing its work appropriately or it's, it's missing resources, it will pull them from the skin. So the skin is like the canary in the coal mine. It will, you'll notice things in the skin way before they happen inside the body. So if we have a, a, a dry skin, we've got a health problem. We've got to figure out what is, the, what is the mechanism of, first of all, what's the mechanism of healthy, hydrated skin? What's the mechanism of the diseased skin or the, the dry skin? It is, you know, it sounds harsh to call it disease skin, but it is. Technically, that's what it is. Dry skin is disease skin, technically speaking. So what is it that keeps the skin hydrated? Well, you've got four main factors that are involved in how your skin stays hydrated. First of all, you've got the surface, the barrier. That surface, which is made up of hard, fatty, solid cells with a certain flexible nature, plastic, they call it, plasticized nature, sort of flows, that barrier is largely, probably 90% or more, made up of something called corneocytes. And those, cor remember, site just means cell. Don't get all thrown off by the name corneocytes. Hard cells, but it means those corneocytes, as we said before, are derived from the stuff at the bottom. The bottom cells are round and plump and juicy. They're rising to the top where they become the barrier. Movement upwards becomes very important, and there's lots of things that you could do to facilitate movement upwards. We'll talk about that here in a second. So facilitating movement upwards, or, or movement upwards, I should say, is the, uh, how the, one of the main ways the skin stays hydrated. Movement upwards of the cells from the bottom to the top. Second way skin stays hydrated is with fats. There are fats inside the skin, and fats trap water. Fats act as water barriers, and there's fats all scattered throughout the skin, throughout the lower la layers of the skin, lower layers of the epidermis. Those fats have a fat trapping property, have a water trapping property. Then there is water magnets that live in the skin, literally water magnets. They're called the natural moisture factor, the NMF. And these water magnets are made up of proteins and, and uh, certain sugary-like substances. And then, of course, there's water. You gotta have water in the skin. There's literally water molecules in the skin. There's even water molecules in the stratum corneum when it's healthy. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny, 44236, 6010 is our number. You're listening to the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844 236 6010, 844 236. 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges, you or a loved one may be dealing with skin health questions, questions about skincare products or ingredients or, or truth treatment products, which are all available at truthtreatments.com. Longevity products are all available at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866 735 2470. 866-735-2470. Okay, we'll get your calls here in just a sec. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. From the journal PLOS One, Public Library of Science One, many patients show signs of chronic kidney disease before diabetes diagnosis. Kidney disease and diabetes go hand in hand. If you have a kidney problem, you've got a blood sugar problem, but
but you don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic to have a blood sugar problem. Diabetes is just a word, people. Diabetes is just a name of something. Diabetes is not the issue. The issue is dysglycemia. A diagnosis is just a way of getting you in the computer. Dysglycemia is exactly what's happening in the body. Dysglycemia is the mechanism. Dysglycemia is what you have to address, and you are dysglycemic way before you get your official diagnosis. So, of course, you're going to show signs of kidney problems before you get your official diagnosis. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. Dysglycemia, excuse me, dysglycemia means messed up blood sugar. Simple as that. DYS means dys, for dys means messed up, glyce for sugar, emia for blood. Messed up blood sugar, quite literally, from the Latin, dysglycemia. And that's how we want to think of diseases. We want to think of our diseases, not as the names, not as the diagnosis, but as what is, what is happening at the mechanistic level. Many patients who will later be diagnosed with diabetes show signs of chronic kidney disease even before their diabetes diagnosis, according to a study by researchers with the University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center. Well, of course they do, because your body is messed up way before it gets diagnosed as being messed up. If you have a kidney problem, you have a blood problem. If you have a blood problem, the chances are pretty good you've got a blood sugar problem. Unless you're injecting something in through your skin or you're in the... It's pretty much par for the course in the way we live our lives with the standard American diet that almost everybody who is symptomatic has some kind of issue with dysglycemia. How do you deal with it? It's simple. It's one of the easiest things you could ever deal with. You lower your cortisol because cortisol is uh, will spike your blood sugar. And... You change the way you eat, and then, of course, get on a good nutritional supplement program that features nutrients that help the body process sugar. All right, from Johns Hopkins University, published in the, university, uh, in the European Respiratory Journal, diet rich in apples and tomatoes may help repair the lungs of ex-smokers. A study from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health found that the natural decline in lung function over a 10-year period was slower among former, uh, smoker, among former smokers who ate tomatoes and fruits, especially apples, suggesting certain components in these foods might help restore lung damage caused by smoking. You better believe they do. Phytonutrients, plant nutrients, are incredibly, incredibly protective against oxidation. They're antioxidants. Think about it. Apples and pears and tomatoes, they have learned to thrive under very brutal solar conditions. In fact, you might say that they've had to, they've had to develop uh, uh, antioxidant and, and anti-stress chemicals because they're constantly in the sun. They can't, they can't grow without being in the sun. They also are, are subject to attack by predators. So they have developed chemicals that act as powerful environmental strengtheners, environmental support agents, and we can take advantages, advantage of those ourselves. It's always a good idea, by the way, to heat your veggies a little bit, your tomatoes especially when they're heated. The nutrients are released. I know all about raw, and raw is typically the way to go, but if you heat your veggies just a little bit with butter or with something fatty, these nutrients, which tend to be fatty, these protective nutrients, which tend to be fatty, will come out in the, in your, uh, in the butter, in the coconut oil, whatever lipid you're using, whatever fatty substance you're using, you'll have more access to them you'll have more ready access to them. So understanding how to use, not just t eating the veggies, but understanding how to leverage or how to take advantage of those, of those uh, uh, molecules, those antioxidant molecules in those veggies is important as well. All right, let's see, we got, uh, uh, I'll save these for tomorrow. Uh, got a bunch of calls, got a bunch of calls today. Time to hit the phones, 844-236-6010. Good morning, Natalie in Maryland. Good morning, what's up, Natalie? Good morning, Ben. How are you? I am good. Good to talk to you on the radio here. Yeah, I um, the last time we talked, uh, we I ordered some products. I ordered your um, your uh, blemish complex control. Okay, blemish repair complex. Right. Right. Um, and I and I took it, and I also um, I previously had ordered um. A few, uh, the vitamin C serum and the omega-6 healing cream. Nice. Uh, I've used those off and on, and I also got your sample of the retinol 5% gel. 
Okay. Are you, are you using that on my skin? Okay, go ahead. You're using the retinol? Yeah, I am. I'm using it on my skin, and it is, oh, my gosh, the texture is just so much smoother. How, you know, how, how, many, how many times have you used it? I've used it about, like, three times now. Any peeling? Uh, no, because actually the thing is um, I've previously used a lot of retinol. Um, okay. You know, so you're already, your skin's already exfoliating. You're oh, used yeah. to exfoliate. Okay, got it, got yeah. it, got it. Thank well, you. good deal. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. And and the scarring, of, you know, previous um, scarring from the acne I had and everything, it's just amazing. And the exfoliating that you've mentioned on your show is just dead on. Do you like all the stuff about skin? Dead on. Oh, I love it. I, I mean, okay. I wish I could do it for, for a living, you know, because it's something that I really enjoy. Go to um, esthetician school. Go to esthetician school. Go to esthetician <laughs> school. So, and, and the results are so amazing. Your, your products are just beyond. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have, have you thought about going to esthetician school? Um, no, I've actually, I did makeup school for a while before I had my child, and I was thinking of doing that, and no, never. You might thing. want to consider it. They're estheticians these days. They do a lot of, there's a lot of things they could do. I mean, if you really like, like this stuff, there's a lot of. A lot of uh, new strategies and devices and understandings about the skin. And estheticians are really the go-to for when it comes to skin health issues, much more than dermatologists or doctors, in my opinion. You might want to consider that. All right, Natalie, i got to motivate. Thank you. Thank, you so, okay. thank you so much. appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break, but we'll come back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about skin health issues or our Truth Treatment products, which are all available, by the way, at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Or if you, uh, if you have any questions at all about any health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, we are here for you. This is your program. We are a resource for you. We are, we are all about the mechanisms so that you can understand how to take care of your body, yourself. We want to be your go-to health resource when it comes to health challenges and nutritional supplementation. That's why we're here every day on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We shall return right after this commercial break. Right side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Christina in Arizona. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, What's going on? I have a question um, regarding um, nebulizer um, hydrogen peroxide for pulmonary lung infection. Putting um, hydrogen peroxide uh, in a nebulizer? Yes. Not a bad idea. I mean, I would do. A, do you have a, a, a physician you're working with? You may not uh, want well, to. I have one uh, who gives me vitamin C IV. Um, good. I asked Very good. her about a nebulizer, and uh, she um, she's not really familiar with this. Why would um, Why are you using a neb? Is it for you? Yes. Why are you? Uh, what's the purpose? What's the function of the nebulizer? So why it's a pulmonary lung infection. The valley. Ah, I see. So you want to put some hydrogen peroxide? How about colloidal silver? Um, yeah, I was thinking about this, but um, I would. Yeah, hydrogen. That's not a bad idea. The hydrogen peroxide. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, if it's going to do a whole world of good for you, but it's not a bad idea. There's nothing so wrong with question, it. My question was, um, what what should I put? I mean, can I inhale the distilled water? Because oh, yeah. the hydrogen peroxide should well, be in the in the distilled water. Yeah, and the distilled water. Yeah, you can just put it in your nebulizer. Shouldn't be a problem. And, and it's okay. And it's, it's okay if I buy from the far, from the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, hydrogen the peroxide. Water. Yeah, hi, there's nothing special about hydrogen peroxide. It's all the same stuff. Uh, no, yeah, but my question was about the distilled water in the in the nebulizer. If I buy from the from the grocery store, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Distilled water. Are you asking if, oh. if distilled? Yeah, try and get triple distilled water if you can find it. Triple, uh, triple distilled because you're introducing water. stuff into your lungs, so you know you want to be really yes. careful. But but triple triple distilled is what I would do if you can find okay. it. Okay. Yeah, that was my question. I mean, I already take um, vitamin C and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the. How long have you had the lung infection? How long have you had the infection? Um, a few months. It's not going away. It's not getting better. No. 
Interesting. And so, and then nobody knows it's just happened. It just spontaneously happened to you. Yeah. Just, yeah. Ah, interesting. Um, you know, I'm not a big believer in antibiotics, but there's times you need them. It's, 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 I assume it's not causing you great misery. You sound okay. So it's not like you're, uh, are you, yeah. I mean, it keeps yeah, you from working. I sound okay. Um, yeah, yeah but you, I am on, I am on Diflucan. Oh, you're already on Diflucan. Well, uh, yeah. now, now the Diflucan is not necessarily, uh, it's not for the lung infection, is it? Um, this is what they said. They said it worked for this one. Dif- now, um, Diflucan is a, is for, is a antifungal. Okay. It's a fungal, inf- it's um, a fungal infection. Yes. Is, so they think you have a fungal infection in the lungs? Is that what they're saying? Yes. Ah, I see. How, so, like mold or so did they check? The, yeah. Is, uh, it, ah, I it, see. It's coxy. It's coxy. It, it okay, so it's a, if it's a fungal infection, that's different from an antibiotic. But nonetheless, the vitamin C is a great idea. The vi- and the antibiotics are not going to work for you. But uh, fungal infections are much trickier to deal with. They've got to use mega, super high, high powerful drugs because fungus have spores. You know, bacteria yeah. are much easier to kill than fungus. Fungal, fungal infections, that's a whole different ballgame. The, uh, the best way to deal with a fungal infection, in my opinion, is to work on your gut because the good bacteria can help kill off the fungus naturally. But at the point where you have a fungal infection, you may need some heavy intervention that's in, in the lungs. You may need some medical intervention. Hey, I'm going to move on, Christina. Thank you so much for your call. Good luck with everything. I hope Thank I helped you, you out. Thanks. Thank you. All right, let's go to Greg in Tennessee. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Greg. Hey, thanks for taking my call, Ben. Love your show. <laughs> Thank you. What's going on, man? Um, on a previous show, you had mentioned a couple of different ways to use a uh, digestive enzyme. I, and and yeah. from my recollection, I thought you said that if you took it you know, before a meal, it helps with digestion, but there was a way to use it to uh, decrease inflammation in the body. Absolutely. It's got anti-inflammatory properties. It's got pain-relieving properties. In fact, I, would, I recommend use digestive enzymes if you feel like you're catching a cold. Because it can help help uh, bust up clogs and clots that can lead to uh, immune problems. So if you feel like you're coming down with a cold, take uh, three or four uh, of the digestive en- enzymes on an empty stomach a couple of times a day uh, for a couple of days. I, I would recommend it for that too. But for dental pain, for back pain, for joint pain, pr- uh, pre-surgery, uh, it'll speed up the healing of, of surgical trauma. Uh, if you take a pre-surgery and post-surgery, and of course, then you can also take it with food as well. Digestive enzymes are important for the system, but you have to take them on an empty stomach in order to get the properties for the system. If you take them with food, they will go to your, into your digestive tract to help you digest your food. So you got to take them on an empty stomach to get the uh, benefits, all these extra benefits. Does that help you? Is that what you meant, Greg? Yes, it did. And I was just wondering, is it okay when you say empty stomach, can you take that with a, uh, say, a protein shake in the morning? Or you can, but it's good. then again, the, the enzymes will get diverted into the digestive tract to help you deal with the protein, which is not a bad thing, but you just won't get the other benefits. I see. So just so strictly on an empty stomach, perhaps in, at bedtime? Yeah. Uh, be at bedtime, middle of the day, you know, try, you want to keep your stomach as empty as you can anyway. So there should be two hours here and there where you are not don't have any food in your, in your system. You know, two to three hours after you eat a meal is kind of an, considered an empty stomach. Technically, it's, stomach emptying time is technically six hours, but but uh, there's probably two every two or three hours. You'll be, three hours is a good place to be. Very good. Well, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Take care, Greg. Have All right. Great day. Uh, yeah, you too. Appreciate your call. Let's uh, move on to Virginia and say hello to Dorian. Hey, Dorian. What's up, buddy? Hi. Hey. I'm doing well, thank you. Okay. Um, what kind of I'm name is Dorium? What kind is that? What kind of name yeah. is that? Is that uh, Indian? Um, no, I'm not Indian anyway. No, but no. I, what I are just, you? What's I your just, background there? Well, you have a very my, curious accent. Is why I ask. Yeah, my um, my my folks gave me this unique name, I suppose. Where Where were you born? What country were you born in? I I, I actually grew up grew outside up here? the U.S., but I yes. I. I was ra- I was born in the U.S. Ah, but where'd you grow up? I grew up over uh, in a few places, actually. Okay, so you got like a hybrid accent. That's why. That's why I can't. I couldn't kind of put my finger on it. It's very intriguing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so go on. How can I help you today, Dorian? Okay, my uncle has this incurable wound on his toe. Actually, How old's your uncle? He is forty-six. Thereabouts. 
Okay, so he's 46 and he's got a wound on his toe. Like it's mm-hmm. like this, you could see, you could kind of see like the, the, the fleshy part, the, the stuff underneath the skin, the kind of reddish pinkish stuff underneath the skin kind of thing. Is that what you're talking well, about? I know, I just know, I haven't really looked at it, but it, it, it's been there for more than a year now. That's and not a good thing. He wound, has a slow wound. wound he, yeah, slow wound healing at the extremities. The feet, the hands, fingers, toes, that kind of thing at the extremities of the body is a circulatory problem, and it usually follows blood sugar issues. Mm-hmm. So if he's in his 40s, the chances are pretty good. Is he the kind of guy that takes care of himself or no? Well, I, I'm not sure because I don't live with him. <laughs> uh, you want to you want to have him focusing on his blood sugar. That's what I'd be doing. That's a that, that's a classic sign of a uh, what's of what I've been talking about dysglycemia. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, anything that's going on at the extremities, uh, wound healing, uh, wounds that won't heal, uh, ulcers. They actually call them diabetic ulcers sometimes. Um, or neuropathies, for that matter, in the fingers or toes or hands and feet. So I would be looking at uh, using the Sweeties, keeping the sugar down, B vitamins in general, uh, more protein, ketogenic diet. In fact, he can use his weight as a guide because typically when you have these problems at the extremities, you also have weight problems. So he can, and if he doesn't have weight problems, he has body fat problems. So he'll notice as he um, starts to employ some of these strategies that he's going to lose weight and he's going to lose body fat. And then he'll know he's on that. That's way he, that that's a good way of knowing that he's on the right track. He, very likely he has blood blood sugar uh, blood pressure problems too, and uh, monitoring his blood pressure is another way of telling that he's on the right track. Typically, blood pressure uh, and also uh, you know, skin problems, wound healing problems, as you as you say, and belly fat are indicators that the blood sugar system is starting to get messed up. And for most of us, including myself, that usually happens. Uh, some of those symptoms anyway, not all of them necessarily, but some of those symptoms usually happen right around the age of uh, 28 to 30 for most people living on the standard American diet. So your, your uncle is in very good company, but if he's starting to, uh, starting to uh, show uh, skin problems are starting to show up at the age of 40, I would say that it's time that he gets going here because that's not good. He's, he's a little bit too young for that kind of thing to happen. Yeah. Okay, Dorian? Yes. I have one more question regarding yes, the keto shakes. Yes, sir. Because what about? I was kind of interested in trying those, but I yeah. don't know if it will make me lose weight. I don't. No. I really can't afford no. to lose any. <laughs> no, it's not going to make you lose weight. It might make you lose body fat, but it's not going to make you lose weight. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Dorian. Much. Good to yeah. talk to you, man. Have a great day. All right. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thank you for listening. Please check out our skin health products at truthtreatments.com and all the longevity, excuse me, longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.